All available experts, please report to room A9. So there's extra here, today we're going to go over the module, Ultra Digital Route. The aim of this module is we're going to use the numbers round here and other parts of the edge for ERK to hold and release one of these buttons at the correct time. So let's just get straight into it. Step 1. So the sum of every number on the display is in yellow. Okay, let's do that. So we have 10 plus 90 plus 59 plus 2 plus 92 plus 24 plus 25 plus 64 plus 43 plus 37 plus 7. We get 4... 453. Then take all the letters on the displays in green that are not in the serial number. So we have T, U, Q, and K. None of those are present up here, so you can use all of them. Create the geometric positions. And add those together as well. Or at least I think that's what it means. So we have 20, which is T. 11, which is K, 21, which is U, and 17, which is Q, so we have 69. We're going to add both these numbers together. And we get 522. If their multiple to root is not zero, so let's check. 5 times 2 times 2 is 20, which will give you 0, so it is 0. Emergency cleared. All personnel, please return to your stations. If it wasn't 0, we would be using the multiplicative digital route in the table, but since it was, we would be using the additive digital route. So 5 plus 2 plus 2 is 9. So we're going to be using column 9. This will give us a set of, of edge work to use, which we will create a binary number from going top to bottom whether or not it's present or not. If the piece of HR present is on the bombs, assign it an 1, otherwise assign it 0. So do we have an FRQ? Yes, so that is a 1. Do we have a D battery? Yes, so that's a 1. Do we have an encrypted indicator? No, we only have regular indicators, so 0. And do we have a parallel port? No, so that's also zero. We can now move on to step two. Go to the flow chart below for each button on the module. These four here. For free sufficient of my flowchart, if it had even number times it was reached and was true, assign it a one, otherwise assign it a zero. Go left and right my flowchart will give us another 40 binary number. This will have one digit different than the previous binary number. So let's figure it out and keep track of how, how many times, or, or the parity of how many times each one was reached and was true. So let's start with this top top one here. The bottom's text is either YEA, YA, or NAH. It, was, it is not, so we're going to go no. Both text colour equals the button's colour. It does, we have a red, red text on a red button. So yes. At least four displays are showing a letter. We have four displays showing a letter, so at least four are showing a letter. So that, that is reached, we reached the bottom and that was true. So we have a, have one here. Next button, we have YEA. The bonus text is either YEA, YA, or NAH. It is YEA, so yes. The bonus colour is either blue or yellow. The bonus colour is green, so no. The bonus text colour is either red or green. It's in red, so this is also once true. Next one. Just the letter Y, so no. Buttons text colour does not match the button colour. The bonus text starts with a Y, it does. So this is another one that comes to the bottom and was true. Finally, N, so this is fourth. White and blue. Not white and blue, yellow and blue even. So false. First text of Y, 
So no, so this is false. So we need to remember it wasn't true, so we don't add one on. If you had even number of times it was written was true in Sanya 1, the only one that had an even number of true occurrences was the first one, the zero. So in the end, this is problem one, and these are going to become zeros, because these were reached and were true an odd number of times. And as you can see here, the second digit here in the both binaries was different. Pushing of this, pushing that is different in the binary is pushing the really on the correct button. So we're going to be pressing the top right button. So three. Sum the number received in step one before the digital root was taken, and the two binaries come numbers because they're into decimal. So we've got five two two. Plus one zero 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 one zero 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 is eight. Yeah. And then one one zero zero is twelve. Just to check that. Eight and twelve. So I knew the boys five four two. Those must be held when the total number of seconds remaining is the additive root of the sum plus the average persistence of the sum. So what's the additive persistence? The number of times the addition had to be done to make it up a single digit when getting the, the, additive, the additive digital root. So let's take the digital root of this. We have 5 plus 4 plus 2, which is 11. And the additive again is 2. So digital root is 2, and we had to do the addition twice, so that's plus 2, so it's 4. The bow will be released when the total number of seconds remaining contains the multiplicative digital root for some plus multiplicative persistence. So 5 times 4 times 2 is 40. 4 times 0 is 0. And we had to do it twice. So we're adding 2. So we'll be releasing it on 2. So, we can be pressing, we can be holding this button when the seconds contains the 4, then contains the 2. We get self -watching. This is quite a long module, but if you read through the instructions carefully, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Just be careful on the difference between additive and multiple digital roots and their persistence equivalents. So hopefully you understand how ultra-digital root works now, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.